Good, because so. you are in a, you have a good brain, and you're thinking, and you're talking, and you just keep right on telling people. Promise me? Did I give you my card? I did. Okay, I want you to keep in touch, okay? And you know the person who works for the theatre would be really interesting to his perspectives on this. But the VRM, VRM, it was like a fairly huge deal. Yeah. Like it's basically on a grander scale. It's about like the like individuals and like consumers versus the. Large companies, right? Like just the result of the large yeah. uh, entertainment companies lobbying for like uh, uh, control, uh, just control like the, what over access to the law, yeah. like uh, uh, the properties they have rights to. Yeah, and this, uh, uh, this is like about technology that would be implemented, like baked into every browser. So you couldn't do anything. Uh, every browser, which uh, would mean like uh, also this is the legal stuff as well, which means that like. People who usually tinker with these things, like the internet, the hackers who try to find vulnerabilities and try to figure out how they work, like reverse engineer. This is cool. Yeah. Uh, 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 there are some like legal aspects to this uh, ruling that uh, it would make it even more difficult for these like tinkers to look into these systems. And this is a security issue, and it would also make it more difficult uh, 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 for like volunteers, who are usually voice, uh, like. Yeah, it's usually uh, as it usually falls to volunteers and like um, people are doing this stuff for free, like for them to develop this accessibility tools. Like, it's You're absolutely like, spot on, Maya. Yeah, it's usually not the big companies. Like if there's no pressure on them to do it, they won't do it. They won't do it. That's right. So it falls, falls to the like the passionate individuals. I want you to, Shadi. We have a kindred spirit here. I met on Sunday. And also, Phileas is a kindred spirit. I have to get off this podium because the next one is coming in. I'm coming down. Just a second. Definitely. Hang on. Let me get off of this podium because I'm not supposed to be.
I think I've just been given the job. Thank you. Do you have an agenda? And I will follow. No, we go to see the panel. Yes. Okay. I want to give you a background about the thing. Well, what I need is an agenda, and we'll fly. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. You will take a piece of it, oh, but with the, with the... Ah. Yeah, the background paper is open for you. Huh? Hey, but what's your name? It's open for the background paper. Yes, this is the background paper of the... I can't read all this. You're going to have to guide me through because it's really fast. So, so, digital, so it's what do you about, want? It's about digital inclusion in Africa, and these are the questions we need to tackle. I'll give an all introduction, right. and these are the... And I, because you know the panelists, my recommendation... You I start, start, and start, and then you... Uh, and, then, the and, yes, and then I'll do that. All right, that's yes. fine. Yeah. I can do that. I am now moderating. I'm not. Okay. Thank you, Shadi. I've just been roped to be the moderator here. Okay, are you staying or going? You're going to do another session. Okay, I'm leaving it. Will you tell him that we might be 15 minutes late? It's 545. Okay, all right. Okay, oh. this is you. Yes, ma'am. Jimson. Yes, please. Got it. I'm going to so meet. I would start and then you Shall I move that? here? No, she would sit beside us. Okay. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet you. All right. No, no. So I'll only do the introduction and then, and then I will give the floor to them and then you take, you take 
the notes and we make the bridge. Okay? I will do the bridge. Okay, no problem. And we have an hour. The remote moderator. He was sitting right there. Online moderation. Now you have to have captioning. Do you have your captioning? Is your captioning up? Do you have your captioning? Uh, ah. This is a test for captioning. Okay. All right. Let me see if I can turn that off. I doesn't want to turn off. Thank you. <laughs> this, thing, this is stuck. This is stuck. It doesn't like turn yeah, it. It's here. Yeah, but this one won't turn off. Won't? Yes, sure. Thank you. We can get you one. I don't know whose pen this is, but I stole it. No, it's okay. So, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nirvana Farag. I'm the Director General of International Cooperation in the Egyptian Cabinet Information and Decision Support Center. First, allow me to thank, uh, to start by thanking our distinguished speakers for accepting our invitation to, partici to participate in the second open forum organized by the Egyptian Cabinet Information and Decision Support Center in IGF 2017. Last year, actually, we organized our first open forum, and it was about creating an enabling environment for inclusive, inclusive economy using ICTs. It was an attempt to support the decision makers with different policy mix in addressing aspects of enabling ICT in achieving inclusive growth and its impact on sustainable development from a multi-stakeholder approach perspective, including representatives from international organizations, private sector policymakers from Egypt and African countries. Building on the success of the first forum, we were encouraged to organize our second forum. This year, we have chosen the topic of digital inclusion in Africa. And uh, during the, uh, the, the questions we want to tackle in this forum today, uh, what are the measures needed to ensure digital inclusion of people in Africa? What should governments do to foster digital literacy for uh, their nations? What are the policies and measures needed to address the technology skill gap between Africa and the rest of the world? Are African education sy systems up to the challenge of delivering a digital workforce? What should be done to further unleash ICT's potential economic and so societal benefits? How can technology help in facing crises and disasters in Africa? In what ways can new technologies be applied to early warning systems in Africa? What policies are needed to expand the use of grievance redness mechanisms in Africa? And what are the best practices and success stories for digital inclusion in Africa that can be observed and transferred? So I will uh, leave the floor now to the f our first distinguished uh, speaker, Ms. Mary Odoma, to uh, tackle the first question, what measures are needed to ensure digital inclusion of people in Africa? So Ms. Mary, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, uh, am I loud, am I audible enough? 
Um, if you can hear me, that's fine. My name is Mary Uduma, and um, I coordinate the Internet Governance Forum in uh, Nigeria, as well as West Africa. And I'm also involved in the African Internet Governance Forum. Um, I have a little speech here that I will read out. Bridging the digital divide between Africa and the rest of the world had been the most talked about topic and most debated in the continent since 2001. We have talked about it, we have debated. The heads and governments of Africa countries had agreed on actions to bridge the gap. This is what is included in the report of the meeting on Africa's contribution to the DOT force, DOT force, which was held 10 to 12 May 2001 in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. The meeting made useful recommendations which reflected Africa's position to global forum on ICTs, including the G8 DOT force, ECOSOC, United Nations Tax Force, World Economic Forum, all of them, this included what are the things that Africa was looking at. Information and telecommunication policies, strategies, and regulation. Improving connectivity and access to information in Africa. Building human and institutional capacity. Implementing sectoral information society initiatives in Africa with opportunities for business and trade and health care. They concluded by calling on concerned stakeholders to commit themselves to specific actions and support, and support all efforts associated with the development of the African Information Society since 2001. The question is, how far has Africa implemented the above recommendations? I would say to an extent, there has been some steps taken by government in Africa in changing policies and strategies since 2001 to bridge the digital divide between Africa and the rest of the world. Policies like liberalization and privatization of the telecommunication industry through licensing of private sector operators and introdu introduction of regulations that had enabled mobile uptake and expansion of telephone services and users in the continent. The mobile money, for instance, has brought about financial inclusion and efforts are being made in mobile healthcare. Countries have introduced and are supporting e-learning or e-education, e agric e-commerce, e-banking, mainly in the cities. Although uh, in my country, Nigeria, we are extending the e-agri using the mobile phone because farmers are, can receive their input through the use of the mobile phone. I think others. And in, in, in Kenya, you know the Mpesa, how Mpesa, how Kenya has led the world, so Africa leading the world in that. Though Africa has recorded the above progress using Bomai telephony services to increase digital inclusion, they remain over 60% unconnected or undeserved, uh, underserved population of the continent, we, continent who live in semi-urban and rural areas. This exclusion is due to lack of infrastructure, no, no infrastructure, not only that of ICT, but also the adjacent ones like power like capacity. Next is the capacity of users. Most of us that are, most of them that are in this 60% bracket, they are illiterate, they cannot use the telephone. Where the level of illiteracy is still very high. Others include affordability of services, are the services affordable, and the devices. SX taxation to both the providers and the consumer. Local content and local language in content of ICT, local and cultural acceptance. Most rural dwellers have little knowledge of the internet and its, its potentials. It is obvious that the digital device still exists in Africa, between the urban and the rural dwellers, between men and women, different income brackets and different levels of education. It goes without saying that the opportunities for development in the digital economy though great, are yet to be fully harnessed in Africa. Again, the programs in this effort had not been developing organically or out of, um, out of scientific research and resource mobilization driven by revenue generation appetite. We, we have not seen people that are saying, look, since we have this exclusion, let's go there, 
you will make money from there. Let's go do some new things. Thinking out of the box, we are, we are not seeing it. Rather, it had been interventionist, top-down approach with little or no input from the communities. So communities are not involved. The, the big men on top, uh, like, the, like her in the presidency, she makes the decision for them. And so they don't buy in, they don't key in, and so the divide is there. Africa's digital inclusion project must shift to bottom-up approach. It must therefore be based on four key processes of institutionalization. Getting symbolic acceptance by the community, the local content, what the community wants, okay? Stimulating value social activity in, re in relevant social groups like education, education, education. Let's educate our people. Generating linkages to viable re revenue streams. Get the angel investors, venture capitalists, easy of ease of doing business, which uh, countries in Africa are now trying to put in place. Research and development. Then we need the government support. We need government to support enabling environment and adjacent infrastructure development in international partnership. Those are my thoughts in what we can do to have inclusion in Africa. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mary. And now, uh, Dr. Hoda Dahrouk will, will answer the question, what should governments do to foster digital literacy for their nations? Dr. Hoda Dahrouk is a member of the Presidential Advisory Council of Community Development and head of the Central Department of Community Development in the Ministry of Communication and Information Technology and the National Project Director for ICT Trust Fund Egypt. Dr. Hoda, the floor is yours. I think this is will be better. Thank you, our great moderator, Dr. Nirvana. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to be here with you today addressing the digital inclusion as a key pillar in Egypt's effort done in building smart communities in remote areas. Uh, next, please. Uh, I'll give you a background of Egypt in a number. Next, please. Um, now, Egypt is 96 million populations. So it's not a small number by any means. And the bigger part of this number is located and live around the Nile Valley. Next, please. According to the, no, the previous one. <laughs> previous one. Previous. Uh, yes, according to the United Nations Human Development Indicator that assesses countries' long-term progress in three basic dimensions of human development. One, a long and healthy life. Secondly, access to knowledge. And the third one is a decent standard of living. Egypt has shown improvement in its HDI value, which put it in the medium human development category. Next, please. For many years, ICTs had a high mandate in our national strategy. That's why the Egyptians are in. Having a look on the recent numbers, we can see that numbers of active internet users becoming high, mobile uh, subscribers 103%, which means that we are on our way to be on the ICT. Next, in, 20, in, in 2015, the United Nations launched the Sustainable Development Goals and most of the countries, including Egypt, have ratified them, which in turn help it in releasing Egypt's strategy for 2030. It's focusing on efforts consolidated to achieve citizen quality of life. And by its turn, the Ministry of Communication and Information Technology responded to Egypt's strategy 2030 and the SDGs by formulating our strategy to ensure the sustainability of development trajectory. Next, please. Before going, uh, I want to, to give you some best practices of Egypt IC Trust Fund, which is initiative and agreement between and partnership between Ministry of Communication and Information Technology in Egypt and the United Nations Development Program to contribute to strengthen the impacts of the comprehensive development on citizens' lives using ICT. Uh, before I go, I want to show a film that brief all our initiatives. Please, the film, please. Take a look at the world around you. Distances are shrinking. 
life has gotten much easier. And you'll all just become limitless. And the password to all of this is ICT, Information and Communication Technologies, which has given humanity endless possibilities and which no country could have a future without. Our story started in 2002 when MCIT and the UNDP established the ICT Trust Fund with the purpose of harnessing the power of ICT in helping Egyptians reach sustainable development in all the different aspects of their lives. The very beginning started off by laying the foundation for our projects through developing the technological infrastructure and by raising public awareness of how much ICT can impact their lives. To do so, we depended on a vast network of civil society organizations and telecenters with vast geographical reach in both urban and rural areas. And so, we were successful in reaching many places. The first and most important step in our success was building knowledge communities, using and marketing local knowledge in achieving economic development and improving standards of living. This would not have been made possible without the multi-stakeholder partnership with governmental entities, civil society, and specialized experts. Knowledge and information were transformed into best practices that societal forces shaped themselves. The most prominent example being the farmer who could now find agricultural information and expert systems online or on his mobile to help him in solving any problems he could face and to help him increase his agricultural yield. In the past, an Egyptian youth dreamed of a stable governmental job as the best option he could hope to attain. Now, after training with us, he was successful in creating his own dream job, one that could take him to the future he wishes to have. As for micro-enterprises, we were able to improve their competitive abilities by placing ICT tools at their disposal, thus developing their projects and increasing their incomes. Persons with disabilities receive very special attention, and so we developed their schools and educational curriculum to successfully enable their inclusion within the community. With them as partners in our projects, we built a knowledge and educational community for them on the Erata portal. But we didn't stop there. We took all the experiences and success we built and used them to achieve our new target, comprehensive development for remote and marginalized areas. And since we always design our projects based on actual community needs, along with preserving the indigenous cultures we encountered, we were successful in linking our tools and services to their needs, such as those of the Siwa Oasis. We created for Siwa women an innovative method for illiteracy eradication and ICT training, the Tablatar. We also succeeded in developing their handcrafted products and marketing those products electronically to Egypt and all over the world. We emulated and developed our C1 success story in Nuba by offering telemedicine solution. We also worked on improving educational services for both students and teachers. Not only that, but we also helped in supporting women empowerment and in raising family standard of living. In doing so, we offered a complete developmental circle, achieving economic and societal development for Egyptian families. And we will not stop there. We will keep reaching more secluded and unreachable regions of our nation. Our cooperation started expanding regionally. We reached Sudan, and we succeeded in creating the first online agricultural network for the country. And we will keep expanding our horizons until we lend a helping hand to our neighboring African countries. We owe all of this success to many parties Partners who have helped us to be where we are now, and this success was crowned by receiving many regional and international awards. Our projects and ideas are boundless, and our eyes are always fixed on a better tomorrow for all Egyptians and for the coming generations. Remain, please. So, our story in brief is digital inclusion empowerment in remote, remote areas. Next, our story continue and we got many lessons learned. So, by practicing, we succeeded to get all our project integrated solution. So we avail access to technology that provide better opportunities for education, knowledge, health, safety, and employability. By doing so, we attain sufficiently inclusion, security, and empowerment in order to achieve comprehensive and sustainable development. As you have seen from the video, we had a very wide geographical reach in Egypt, which has been, next please, which has been enabled by our adoption of digital inclusion aspects in the complete life cycle of our project, starting from our values, process, till we reach products, services, and finally in marketing these aspect initiative products. IC Trust Fund has been enabled to integrate those aspects in its project life cycle in order to attain digital inclusion of all. I will ask the, the, the IC to, to go next and next to focus on something, but not taking much too time.
these next. The values is reaching the reach, next. We see in the, in the video that we reach many places. Next, please. And we, we reached all categories of families, all family members, next. And our process is not easy, but always possible, next. So we have to create interest, trust, ownership from the community itself to generate with us our initiatives. Next, please. The username is ICT and the password is networking, networking with all the partnership. The partnership is the main in success, in, to be success. Next, please. Our products in, uh, is always innovated and inspired from the community to the community. And here, next, please. I want, next, the tabulator. In the video, we show the tabulator. It's uh, table on the level of the uh, with with uh, with uh, is uh, low shares, and they are used. The tradition they are used to sit on this table. So we create innovation called tabulator. Is a tablea plus computer. So we always create the things affordable to them and not uh, change the culture and the tradition. Please next. We have a, a networks of telecenters all over Egypt to serve by the accessibility and by the content to all the community. Next, please. And there is another uh, model of the mobile IT clubs. It's a bus uh, with, uh, with, uh, with a lab in turn to, to move around for reach the unreach. Next, please. The same mobile health unit for breast cancer detection. Next, please. And the telemedicine model, we, we have uh, a yesterday workshop about the telemedicine solution and how it's uh, becoming uh, very, uh, serve the community in the healthcare uh, the services. And digital inclusion in service, the only way forward, we have a platform of knowledge and the content and Arabic content because the Arabic content is very uh, minimum on the internet. Next, please. Uh, we serve uh, and train and empower the people with disabilities by many initiatives. Next, please. Uh, we train them for uh, jobs and skills for, uh, to, to, to have a decent jobs. Next, please. And we have online children protection program. So we have at the end marking all we have uh, with 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 uh, heritage of success and the heritage of products with the people, uh, like in Siwa, all products in Siwa now on the internet and e-commerce e solution. Uh, the same for Nuba. So we did not stop there. We made next, please, a triple effect uh, in the MENA region. We have impact in many categories of health, education, employability. Next, please. Next. So we have gained some awards and recognition. At the end, let's benefit from the faster growth, next please, of technology, unite for more digital inclusion and equal opportunities to empower our citizens and leaving no one behind. And last word is all about integration between projects, between community, between members, between partners, between countries, definitely. My hope is that this year conference will secure broad support for reforms and digital inclusion that enable our countries to acce accelerate progress towards the SDGs. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Hoda, for the presentation about uh, uh, the efforts taken by the Ministry of uh, in, uh, in MCIT in Egypt to fulfill digital inclusion. Uh, the next speaker is Dr. Uh, Jimson. Dr. Jimson uh, is the chair of AFICTA and he has more than 20 years experience in the national and global ICT industry. Dr. Jimson, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, moderator. Uh, fellow panelists, your excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm a business person and I want to address the issue of uh, data inclusion in Africa from business perspective, uh, because uh, we 
It has worked in Nigeria, and it, we, we want to recommend the, the approach so that it continues to work, work across Africa because business are interested in uh, creating wealth, and we have to create that incentive for people to be enterprising and so that there could be more uh, digital inclusivity in Africa. So I, I'm talking briefly about enabling digital Africa and giving business a real boost. Enabling an inclusive digital transformation of Africa and giving, it, giving business a real boost is a factor of pervasive quality internet access for service delivery across all sectors, notably governance, the running of government processes in Africa. Uh, let's face it, government is the biggest spender in Africa. And the efficiency it brings about in the performance of its function has the potential of engendering true transformation of African economy and the unleashing of internet economy potential of Africa, thereby giving business a real boost. Uh, permit me to use the scenario of Nigeria. Uh, since the return of civil rule in 1999, uh, there has been a lot of uh, things that have changed structurally with regard to policy, policy changes like uh, our uh, Nigerian IDF champion, Mary Uduma, alluded to these uh, changes. And uh, as it is now, the efficiency is not yet there uh, because uh, in Nigeria we're still operating at one-fifth of our potential. Well, we, we look at WISIS. The WISIS mandate is there, and the earlier speakers talk about uh, the effort of Egypt to meet the uh, WISIS uh, targets. Uh, this is also what we are advocating, that uh, we should focus on those WISIS targets, you know them, connecting villages, connecting schools, connecting everybody and uh, incorporating new ways of connecting uh, citizens across Africa. So how do we provide the needed enabling environments? Whenever an enabling environment is provided, a child will naturally develop well in all ramifications. So who provides the enabling environment for children to grow? Of course, the parents are talking about an enabling environment for an internet economy in Africa. The prime enabler as the biggest spender is government. So what the government does and does not do in part greatly on the realization of a truly digital Africa. Here are some factors I think may need to be addressed to foster entrepreneurship and innovation and giving of a boost to business. Number one, there has to be internal collaboration within its structure and agencies. You know, it is well known that a house divided within itself cannot stand. So when government agencies are not collaborating among themselves and instead are working at cross poses, poses they inadvertently undermine business environment. I'm happy to know that creating the ICT fund in Egypt brought in a lot of partners. This is kind of uh, collaboration required. Government agencies with similar work, sp work spoke, uh, scope, excuse me, should through MOU come together to address issues such as multiple taxation, right of way, enforcement of, of intellectual property rights, removal of trade barriers, etc. Where there is no digital strategy, one should be developed to provide direction into the future. It is worthy of note that the Nigerian government recently, as my uh, dear colleague here mentioned, issued three executive orders on ease of doing business. And that as a scale of Nigeria, 24 points on the World Bank ease of doing business scale. Number two, collaboration with business stakeholders. Government should not only collaborate within itself, in addition, it should collaborate with business organizations and stakeholders to know how best to fine tune policies for business growth and provision of opportunities for entrepreneurship and innovation, especially in the area of procurement. Procurement. And uh, to, we need to have transparency, even in this regard. I would like to appreciate the government of Egypt and of, of Nigeria uh, who have signed an MOU with AFICTA. AFICTA is the voice for business, uh, ICT business entrepreneur in Africa. Uh, started six years ago, or five years ago, and from, with six members, now about 30 membership across uh, Africa. Number three, support for resort-oriented incubation centers through granting and provision of subvention. So what it is that don't need to be replicated, providing support you know, for new innovation. The certain number of innovation funds with established budget line and are tied to steady funding inflow comparable to the U.S. National Science Foundation will go a long way to engender innovation and entrepreneurship in Africa. 
The other quick point I need to note, infrastructure. Uh, details of that have been uh, mentioned. There has to be connectivity. 30% uh, of Africans are, are, you know, stay co are connected. We most still need to be connected. In Nigeria, about 55 to 60% are connected. We still need more people to be connected. Africa is a wide region. We need new technologies like TV white spaces. We need to uh, engage businesses to have policy for the, to use the TV white spaces to get to uh, more people. Affordability is another thing. Until broadband is 5% of monthly income, according to UN benchmark, digital Africa of our dream may remain elusive. Though many countries in Africa, notably Egypt and Nigeria, have made the alliance for affordable internet one to two ratio, that is one gig for 2% of monthly income index. Uh, generally, the cost of a, of a monthly broadband access is still very high in Africa. So what can be done to enhance affordability of access? What can be done, including removing multiple taxation reducing uh, taxes, reducing spectrum licenses fees, using universal service provision fund, etc., cetera, uh, et cetera. One network in Africa, we want that. East Africa has done it, and that got boosted their business greatly, up to 950% business activity, traffic happened. So we want that kind of scenario across Africa. ECWA is trying to do something like that. Payment uh, system needs to be enhanced. And there has to be self-development for entrepreneurs. They need to be encouraged, because you can't be an entrepreneur if you don't know what you want to do. So in conclusion, when every actor in the digital transformation spectrum steps up and plays their respective role, e-friction, you know, we see friction right now. So e-friction, according to ICANN sponsored study by the Boston Consulting Group, will be minimized, giving countries up to 3% boost in GDP and business a real boost for a truly digital Africa. And that has a cascading effect. Thank you very much. Dr. Jensen, uh, and now we'll give the floor to Dr. Atif Shabrawi. Dr. Atif Shabrawi has more than 24, 25 years of experience in the different elements of social, economic, and innovation ecosystems. Dr. Atif, the floor is yours. Thanks, Nirvana. <clears throat> I start by thanking everyone in the room, and I, I take the, um, the efforts to talk about the economic inclusion and the digital. I guess that economic inclusion uh, is one of the most uh, important uh, topic we are talking about. Next, please. Uh, in fact, w I will try to uh, illustrate the, um, the question of economic inclusion by focusing on, the, uh, on one of the most important things, which is financial inclusion. I will try to demonstrate that quickly by two examples, mentioning that how, um, how Africa is responding and how people using digital are going faster than the governments in Africa. I start by uh, showing you this at the World Bank uh, statistics regarding the unbankable. This is a banking penetration percentage in the world and uh, that uh, graph only for Africa showing that we have about 77% of Africans are unbankable. It, it, it makes about uh, 450 million uh, people are um, debriefed from banking services, and we understand well what, what means uh, don't have a banking system, though you are excluded from the services. We have different reasons behind that, either the uh, infrastructure, lack of infrastructure of banking in Africa, either the uh, financial literacy, either many uh, parameters, but that the situation where we have to face, and uh, talking about my colleague mentioning the enterprise development and the micro enterprise in Africa wouldn't uh, go up without financial support. So I use the first example which we have at least next. That's so all that the opportunity which I mentioned and I will use it that the presence of two interesting tools we have actually the, w the word digital is giving us two fundamentally interesting tools the mobile and the uh, platform and the internet and we have two charts here we can see the first one the comparison between the penetration of, uh, of uh, cell phone in India and the two African countries just to show you that uh, surprisingly uh, some African countries have much more uh, mobile usage than India which is is not the, the current image we have uh, from Africa. And the second uh, figure uh, showing the, uh, uh, the expansion of internet usage in Africa comparing to the world, which is not so mu much bad, I guess, is 46%, uh, uh, which is not so much bad as we expect. 
So how can we imagine African people are using such wonderful tools? The first example is, is an example which we can't believe it coming from the uh, Somaliland. And imagine that some of uh, sub-Saharan countries are considering where we have uh, a real uh, lag of infrastructure of banking and we have 100% of cash-based uh, banking system. One guy in, uh, working in telecom uh, about 10 years back invented uh, the, for, for the first time the, the uh, uh, a system which is using mobile uh, for, as, as a transfer of money. Without mobile banking, just money, we have to uh, charge the, the mobile. It, is a, it was the first time invented, then it became worldwide used. Uh, the company uh, uh, call it Zad. Zad in Arabic, it means uh, uh, wealth or uh, khair. And uh, starting from 2009, we are witnessing after uh, about Three years, we have 40% of, uh, of usage, and uh, the World Bank in 2012, I guess, uh, edited a report mentioning that uh, Somali is uh, uh, the most, uh, let's say, the highest uh, growth rate of, uh, of using um, uh, mobile banking in, in, in the world with a penetration which is uh, three times uh, more than the average in the world. And this, imagine a country where we don't have banks, we have only one branch in the, I have been in Somaliland, it's so much uh, dif difficult that we have only the headquarter of the bank. All villages and all the country mostly don't have branches. So imagine that that kind of solution brings money to the villages and brings the activity and economic activity that is in 100% African invention. Next, please. The second one, which is uh, using the platform, and I guess that most of us are using currently uh, Uber, and uh, we, uh, we are facing the tremendous um, uh, uh, increase of uh, platform uh, application in terms of economic empowerment, like the crowdsourcing and crowdfunding. Here I will just mention one example, please, next, please, that uh, um, the, the invention of crowdfunding, I guess some of you know what is crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is a, is a lending money on the net. So we have people who are giving uh, donation or uh, credit and people are receiving it. And we have seen the worldwide uh, expansion of crowdfunding. Next, please. Uh, uh, Africa wasn't uh, far from that. And we are uh, Africa with the highest level of growth of, of platform. We have about 75 platform of crowdfunding in Africa which means that we, have about, uh, we are reaching a very high penetration rate of uh, uh, organization. I, I mentioned regarding Egypt. Egypt was the first country who was uh, implementing Kiva uh, in, in the North African country, Arab country. I guess we are um, using, as again, um, uh, the digital in terms of economic empowerment much faster than the government. I will finish by having three messages. I guess that digital economic inclusion become a fundamental tool in development. We can't uh, escape the digital economic and the implementation of certain application. The second, Africa is contributing the digital inclusion, and this is very nice, and we have to highlight the examples where we have real ground invention, which we can be proud and we can share the experience. I understand that we do have tremendous challenges. The last point that Africa is growing a global player on crowdfunding, and uh, due, to, due to the need in the ground, we feel that Africa might be one day a champion of having the highest uh, level of penetration of crowdfunding. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Atuf. And now we open the floor for questions. Any, and then we move to the next speaker. Okay, I'm supposed to jolly you on. We have had four fabulous speakers who have spoken about four different subjects, two from Nigeria and two from Egypt. They're very important subjects, and surely there must be one or two people that have a question. There's a question, would you do me a favor? When you speak, would you give your name, and if it's difficult, spell it for the captioner, please, and put the microphone close to your mouth. Thank you. Hello? Is it okay? Go ahead. Okay. Hello. Uh, Khalil Talbi from Tunisia. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I think in terms of uh, uh, digital inclusion uh, in Tunisia and uh, Egypt, 
sorry, we are having the same evolution um, in a way that in Tunisia, half of the population is uh, today connected to internet, which is quite the same in Egypt, uh, more than a third, I think. And uh, in terms of uh, trade, this inclusion didn't brought enough to uh, our country. For example, if I list the example of Tunisia, only 0.1% of GDP uh, revenue of e-commerce represent only 0.1% of GDP. In Egypt, I think it's quite the same, which is around 0.5%, uh, if I consider the data that I found on internet. Uh, from, I am here uh, in IGF representing the uh, e-commerce private sector. And uh, what I am see, uh, seeing in Tunis and uh, what we are remarking actually is that inclusion. I'm not saying that we uh, do not have to promote it or uh, help it. But inclusion, by the way, is also opening a kind of uh, 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 path for the parallel for the black market in a way that people found some platform like uh, the social network and they used them to sell directly on Facebook and uh, in a C2C approach uh, and, um, and uh, this fact I didn't see it in, in uh, it wasn't really uh, um, even in, in, in some other uh, session, I, um, I haven't heard about it. So what I wanted to know is uh, if in Egypt you have really faced the same case or uh, if it is not. And uh, it might be also the case for uh, Nigeria. Is uh, inclusion also promoting the black market? And did you found uh, some solution in, uh, to, uh, to fight it? Thank you. Dr. Afif, would you like to answer that, please? Uh, yeah, I, um, your question is very valid. In fact, we do have, uh, we are facing a, a real problem with uh, particularly the growth of sharing economy and uh, what we call it crowdsourcing and the C2C. Uh, and uh, personally, I, I participated in the World Bank last year in the same time for a session to think about what are the measures to regulate that kind of activity. And still in Egypt, we, are, we, uh, we have kind of regulation for uh, Uber, for example. But imagine that people who are looking to uh, poor people who are creating micro enterprise uh, and are working at home, and they are just willing to move from extreme poverty to poor uh, situation, and they are selling on Instagram and Facebook. Most of time, they are considered, if you go back to the uh, commercial laws, and uh, you will find in most of our countries that commercial laws are not applicable for certain activity, which we call it minor activity. So we can consider that the reform of commercial laws might include that kind of activity, or we can reorganize uh, uh, sell on the uh, application like Instagram and Facebook. But let's say be, let's be positive and consider that kind of things which people who are uh, bottom line in the, in the line are trying to reach uh, the, the point where we have traders, we have businesses, we have registered business who are paying taxes, are working properly. So I, I consider personally as a part of, uh, of the game of the country who are, we, you have seen the tremendous efforts uh, all our countries are doing to raise the poverty and reaching uh, out, uh, reach it unbankable and outreach. So we, we are just starting to in attract them to be productive and to be, uh, you know, integrated in the economic cycle. Then we are, uh, some countries, Egypt is taking care to regulate uh, informal sector and putting more incentive in front of people working in formal sector to become formal. So the, the issue is having different angles and not a straightforward legalization of uh, the sales on the Facebook, I guess, or uh, social media. I guess from one side, we are encouraging them to be part of active and uh, economic empowerment cycle and from other side people who are regulating are thinking how to make it better to uh, to sustain it and to keep the rights of the government thanks thank you very much we have some questions from the remote participants I'm going to do one for Mary Undami I may not be saying Adomi, excuse me. And you're going to have to come here and speak. I'm going to make a, a seat. Is there no room? Is there no room? Hang on, we'll get this sorted out. 
And then I have a second question and a third question, but the third question may come a bit later. Thank you. The question is, why is it taking so long for Africa to realize digital inclusion? Because of the time, uh, we're giving our panelists only two minutes to answer these questions. Go ahead, please. Thank you very much for the question. I hope I'm, I'm yeah. being heard. Um, I will say that um, most times Africa will come together, the heads of the uh, governments and the ministers, they'll come, we, we would we'll conduct a lot of um, sensitization programs, conferences, interventions, and no following through. So the political will is hindering us. We have infrastructure challenge not only the, the main ICT infrastructure, but also the adjacent infrastructure. So we have not addressed that. And again, as I said, 60% are unconnected. When you are not connected, how can you be included? Then the fourth thing I want to say is that, uh, Jameson mentioned about the business, coming from the business angle. I don't know, I think our, our government are still playing the big, bro the, the big uh, spender thing instead of encouraging, putting enabling environment for, uh, for, for businesses to be able to let it grow organically, let it come from the business. And if you, if you remember, if you remember, is it up to two minutes? If you remember, you see, the, the question of texting in mobile phone brought about the, the question of mon, mo, mo, mobile payment. Because uh, b in, in our own country, when we had, uh, when mobile came, and when you want to send money from, uh, to your brother or your sister, you buy the recharge card, you scratch it, and you put the pin number there, and the other side, he can sell it. So it brought about the mobile, mobile money idea, and there are things springing up organically. So we should create the enable env em environment and then tackle the infrastructure, not only the, the ICT infrastructure, but the adjacent one, whether it's financial, whether it's health, or most importantly, power. Thank you. We are really running on a tight schedule. I have a second question, please, that's going to be given to Mr. Jimson. What efforts have been done to harness the power of cloud computing to digitally empower an African people who lack the financial means to get infrastructure and equipment for training? You have two minutes. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh Okay, now let me first quickly address that uh, what he said about how do you bring those people in. In Nigeria today, the government encourages all form of commerce, okay? But you need to pay your taxes, do taxes. So there is a BVN, bank verification number, for everybody. You need to get it. If you don't get it, you will not get transactions. So everybody has to get it. Now there is tied to businesses, government take enumeration to provide services. So people are willingly, they are paying their taxes. That is what government needs, get income, and encourage enterprises to flourish. So that takes care of that. Then in terms of cloud, yes, uh, there are a number of clouds of facilities, even right now, emphasis is on localization in Nigeria today. We have, we have an act promoting local content in Nigeria. There is emphasis of local software that could handle things, use it, and uh, that is where to go. Uh, then we now have uh, data centers, proliferating. In fact, I build data centers, and now I'm the edge of uh, information security, so we have to mitigate uh, security challenges. So there are things happening, but we still have some, uh, some uh, uh, development things to still do. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to actually now move on to some other uh, presenters. We do have other remote participant questions, but we're going to take them afterwards. So please. And now, uh, Mrs. Suhaila uh, from the African Union, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. 
I said good afternoon. I think the previous speakers has made good introduction to this subject. From my side, I would say that the digitalization is one of the key priorities of the African Union this year. And this last November, we had this AU, AU summit, and the digitalization of Africa was on the top of the agenda. And we came up with some recommendations and some programs to boost the digital transformation of Africa and the cross-sector uh, digital, digitalization on Africa. With regard to the digital inclusion, we believe that providing affordable access to the African people is the first condition to reach the, the digital inclusion. African countries are making a big progress in building the ICT infrastructure and enhancing internet uh, broadband penetration in Africa these last years. We have seen a big increase in the international broadband bandwidth, especially with the number of the, the increased number of the submarine cables reaching the continent. We have seen also the increase of the infrastructure within the African countries. Now we, the broadband penetration in Africa is around 28% while it was like 5% in, in 2007. And according to the ITU report 2017 for the measure of the information society, all the African countries has made progress in their ICT development index. Only three keep the same position. And we have uh, Namibia, who, who, which was awarded as the first country for the uh, most dynamic information society in the world, followed by uh, Gabon in the third position, which are good, which are good news for us, <laughs> I think. <laughs> also, there is progress. Ah, okay, <laughs> thank you, so congratulations. There is also progress in developing the policies and the regulations with regard to the ICT sector. So according to the broadband uh, Commission Broadband 2017 report, 42 countries have already adopted their national policies or national strategies for the development of ICT sector. We have noticed also many countries and many success, digital success stories in Africa, when many countries are moving to the, to the delivery of public services or, or administration services through the e-government platforms, which is a good opportunity to enhance the di uh, digital inclusion of citizens, because it allows all citizens to access to the services. We have seen also so many good experiences, so as uh, the previous speaker mentioned, the mobile transfer or mobile money, which allows the, the financial inclusion. We have also other examples like, for example, in Rwanda, they create like ICT centers to allow development of uh, e-entrepreneurship and development of e-content. We have all these good stories or success stories. They are just like uh, pilot projects in Africa. They are exam good exa examples that we need to analyze and to replicate to other countries to allow all African citizens to access to this di digital services. For us, the digital transformation Africa of Africa is the good opportunity for the continent itself to transform itself, to catch up with the rest of the world, and to develop all the sectors at the same time. And we believe to, to reach the digital inclusion, we need also to, to develop local content to, to reflect the, the, the African identity and African culture in the website to allow all African citizens to participate in this digital revolution. We have some, I have some proposal, for example, to enhance the, to allow the, to ensure the digital inclusion. We need to, to include the digital, or we can say the digital skills in the schools at early stage in the school curricula, encourage young people to undertake or to take engineering my degree in science and technology and science computer, raise awareness of the young people about the importance of ICTs as a tool, as cross-cutting tool, cross tool, also as 
opportunities of career and job creation for the future. There is a need to create in real areas more awareness about the ICT, creating like centers to build capacity of the general public on the use of the ICTs, use, safe use of ICTs, I would say. I would not be long since I have used all my time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Suhaila. And now we will move to another perspective uh, about uh, crisis and disaster management and early warning systems in Africa. And uh, Mr. Mohammed Hassan, will, uh, he is the deputy director of the crisis and disaster management sector in the Egyptian Cabinet Information and Decision Support Center. Mohammed, the floor is Dr. Mohammed, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, because of the limits of the uh, time, I'm going to just highlight uh, very specific points. Uh, the n number one is the African continent holds uh, half of the world's most risk-prone countries and is experiencing a rising number of disasters. So these disasters have neg negative impacts on the uh, continent's development achievements, and this requires that all stakeholders uh, recognize and react to the importance of disaster risk reduction in order to make a progress towards sustainable development. In this regard, I would like to, uh, to refer to the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction 2015-2030, which uh, articulates the needs for improved understanding of disaster risk in all its dimension of exposure, vulnerability, and hazard characteristics. One of the most important uh, targets of the seven global targets of Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction is target number G, which focuses on substantially increase the availability of and access to multi-hazard early warning systems and disaster risk information and assessments to people by 2030. Egypt is subject to different kinds of disasters risks such as those resulting from natural hazards, environmental pollution, transport accidents, and etc., uh, and also is highly vulnerable to climate change impacts and faces numerous threats to its economic, social, and environmental uh, sustainability. Uh, accordingly, Egypt has developed its national strategy for disaster risk reduction, taking in consideration the role of new technologies in this regard, focusing on two main components, which are developing an early warning system and raising public awareness. In the area of early warning, a national emergency management system has been developed by a specialized team from the Information and Decision Support Center, uh, benefiting from the successful international experiences and best practices in this field. Also, the system is a standardized approach to emergency management in Egypt, intending to facilitate coordination between all stakeholders and responders on different levels national and nationally and locally. It provides a comprehensive framework for emergency monitoring and evaluation using integrated databases uh, for records of, for all types of incidents, risk identification, levels of risk, emergency response plans, and contacts of res concerned response teams enhanced with the use of GIS for risk mapping. The system is provided with systematic, da uh, systematic data and warnings from different concerned agencies through their uh, parameters for different types for natural hazards. And then these warnings can be disseminated to concerned uh, uh, local governments to take necessary actions for informing vulnerable people in vulnerable areas. Uh, also, the system uh, has been introduced to the users on local level through a training course which provided a basic introduction, features, and follow-up mechanism. The system can be introduced to African uh, countries as a role model for emergency management systems and early warning. Also in the area of raising public uh, awareness, as one of the non-structural ingredients of the disaster management cycle, which plays a crucial role in disaster mitigation and preparedness, the Egyptian government is widely using the social media to conduct emergency communications and issue warnings by providing information and instructions with real-time alerts and warnings, establish situation updates, counter inaccurate press coverage, or 
to counterbalance rumors and manage repetitional uh, effects. Finally, uh, I would like to conclude with building the resilience to disasters involves building the capacity of individuals, communities, and societies to adapt and bounce back better from hazards uh, without jeopardizing long-term development. It also calls for the inclusion of disaster risk reduction in development programs. And this requires more efforts to maximize the use of technology and digital inclusion in the area of early warning and disaster risk management in Africa and enhance regional cooperation for developing regional databases for disaster risk reduction. Thank you. Unfortunately, we had such interesting speakers, we ran over a couple of minutes. So we're already into the next session's time. But the, this is not unusual. The comment that came through, which we'll end on, is, the, and this is a comment of many remotely, um, governments, um, the government path uses the internet inter, in, and interest should focus more on infrastructure, power, education, content, illiteracy, and language because without them, little can be done. So it's extremely important that Africa gets on the ICT bandwagon and all these people are working very hard to try and accomplish that. So would we give them a big round of applause and sorry it ran over. Thank you. We have to end this session. Hello.